Porsche 919 Hybrid, the all-dominant Le Mans winner between 2015 and 2017. And along with the Audi R18, it became synonymous with LMP1 racing. And thinking about it, both of those cars might have actually helped kill that category. But actually, I need to address that point because the 919 wasn't as dominant at Le Mans as some of these websites and YouTube videos would have you believe. In 2014, it finished fourth. In 2015, it did indeed win in style, with Nico Hülkenberg behind the wheel for a duration of that race. But in 2016, it fluked it thanks to the Toyota breaking down on the last lap, and in 2017 fluked it again due to pretty much every single one of the LMP1s having mechanical issues. If it had spent any longer coming through the field, an LMP2 entered by Jackie Chan would have won overall. Although it did, however, win the World Endurance Championship three years running. And I've covered the 919 in several versions of the same video because reasons, but I will give you a recap of what the car was because, well, it's one of my all-time favourites. The 919's last year of competition was in 2017, with its last race being the six hours of Bahrain where the cars finished second and third, which was enough for them to win the constructors or manufacturers title, whatever they're called over there, for the third time in four years that the car had been racing. But for 2018 though, Porsche was gone from the WEC and had then gone to Formula E due in part to the fallout surrounding parent company VW's involvement with the so-called Dieselgate controversy. Although Porsche continued to give factory support to GT teams and do the whole Porsche Cup thing and stuff like that. Porsche and Audi were missed for the 2018 WEC season. Toyota romped to victory winning every single race, except for the round at Silverstone where the team was disqualified. The WEC was now the Toyota show, and equivalence of technology rules didn't help matters given that there was a rule basically saying non-hybrids are not allowed to be faster than the hybrids. And with Toyota being the only hybrid on the grid, so long as it stayed running, it was guaranteed to win. But while Porsche was working on its new all-electric program in Formula E, some boffins back in Stuttgart were preparing one last hurrah for the beloved LMP1 car. Porsche decided that it was going to take the standard 919 and basically do a what if. What if there were no rules? What if the WEC was run to the same run what you brought sort of that Can-Am used to have, a series that Porsche is often accused of killing off? But the 1973 recession and fuel price hike did a lot more than Porsche and Penske ever did. Either way, Porsche has a history of building super mad, super powerful racing cars. But while Porsche was calling this a what if, it was, for all intents and purposes, a huge fuck you to the whole motor and racing industry. Porsche started out by looking at the insides of the car first. The engine was totally untouched, not even tuned to within an inch of its life. They simply deleted the code in the ECU to allow unlimited fuel flow and did the same for the hybrid deploy system. Straight off the bat, this increased the power of the standard 919's ICE from 500 horsepower, which was pretty much a flat limit set by the WEC, to 720 horsepower. Turning off the hybrid deploy limits bumped that portion of the power unit up from 400 to 440 horsepower. So all in, this car now produced 1,280 horsepower, there or thereabouts, up from the previous 900 horsepower. That's a 42% increase in power according to my Millward maths, TM. But Porsche didn't stop there. It was all well and good gaining a 42% increase in power, but it needed to actually stay on the track. So Porsche designed an all new front splitter and rear wing that were much bigger than what was on the standard 919 and to add a little spice to things, they even added a DRS system, exactly like the one found on a Formula 1 car. This then allowed for mega top speeds on tracks that allowed for it. They also added a four wheel brake by wire system and all in they managed to reduce the weight of the car by around 40 kilos to get it to weigh just 849 of those kilos. A 42% increase in engine power and a whopping 53% increase in downforce. With all those calculations done, this new version of the 919 was producing more downforce and power than a Formula 1 car. A 2017 Formula 1 car to be precise. Pictured is the Evo, or the Tribute, whatever you want to call it, next to the original 919. Now, a couple of things to note here, and the first that this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison since the 919 on the right is base content for Assetto Corsa, while the Evo on the left is the new RSS P19 Evo model that just released. I know there's going to be some anoraks out there that will notice some glaring differences, but this is the closest I'm going to get, I'm afraid. But at least you have some sort of representation of the two cars next to each other. If you are one of these anoraks that needs a proper one-to-one -one realism comparison, whatever you want to call it, I do apologise, this is the best I can do. I can't actually find a picture of the two cars next to each other. 
but on top of all of this, Porsche removed the headlights to reduce drag even more and managed to improve the overall aero efficiency by a whopping 66%. Porsche also stripped the car of any unnecessary weight, given that the new rear wing diffuser and stuff was going to make the car heavier. They removed everything mandated by the WEC, such as the electronics that controlled the three dots on the side of the car, the windscreen wipers, the air conditioning unit, and basically anything else that wasn't required to get the car running or stop the driver being killed if it ended up in a wall. Michelin also helped out, providing new grippier tyres that were going to help process all of this new sweet, sweet downforce. So what were the results then? The 919 EVO completed a lap of Spa in 2018 in a mind-blowing 141.770, a time that was a whopping 12 seconds faster than what the regular car did for the 2017 WEC race. On top of this, the car went around 3 quarters of a second faster than Lewis Hamilton's pole lap in the 2017 Formula 1 Grand Prix. For the 2018 Grand Prix, Hamilton was again on pole but set a 158 due to it raining in the third qualifying session but his second qualifying session time was a 141.553, just two tenths faster, although Vettel was fastest in that second qualifying session. Down the Camel Straight, the Evo was clocked at 223 miles an hour before Neil Yarny had to slam on the brakes for Lay Calm. 223 miles an hour, that's... Well, that's 360 in new money, isn't it? The lap got the attention of everybody in the motoring and racing world. Porsche was not f***ing around with this thing and they were taking it on a global tour. Porsche was calling it a show of engineering, but it was more, Oh, hello Mr. Hamilton, that lap record of yours? Yeah, well I'm changing its name to mine. I mean, it would had it actually run at more than just Spa, but it didn't need to. They'd made their point. The crowning glory though for this car was when it turned up to the Nürburgring Nordschleife in 2018 for the 24 hour race there. Porsche was going for the ultimate piece of penis measuring in terms of automotive terms by lapping the Nürburgring Nordschleife faster than any other car in history, a track that was 13 miles long and was once called the Green Hell by Sir Jackie Stewart. But the man tasked with driving this car faster than anybody else in history was Timo Bernhardt, and he went out and he set an absolutely stunning 519.5. I'll say that again, 519.5. 5.19.5 Mental. But Belloff's record was set on a different layout and under different conditions. He actually had to conform to some rules, so it did cause a bit of discord on the internet. Some said that Bernhardt's lap was a slap in the face to Belloff, who had achieved racing immortality. Others tried to discredit the lap because of the reasons just outlined. The 919 Evo isn't a race legal car, and Belloff did it on a different layout and therefore the record had not been broken. The thing is though, Bernhard wasn't driving at 100% for obvious reasons. Those who have done their obligatory Nürburgring hot laps in the RSS car have gone, it's too quick. But in the sim, you don't have G-forces. You have unlimited resets and you can just throw the car over bumps. Bernhard didn't have that luxury. The car still holds the outright lap record, but for actual production street legal cars, the record is currently held by the AMG Project 1 which has set a time of 6.30.7 for reference. But what the 919 EVO did was basically show a huge middle finger to the rulebook and to the rest of the motor industry. It showed what was achievable if there was nothing holding the cars back. And in terms of racing car engineering, it's probably the epitome beyond Formula One. It makes you wonder then what would have happened if Bernhard had driven at 100%. 10 seconds off the time, 15 seconds off the time, who knows? Sub five minute lap? That would be insane. It's not race legal, but who cares? But anyway, a look at the absolutely insane, beautiful, I mean, I'm, I'm running out of superlatives for it, Porsche 919 Evo. If this has been new to you and you've learned something new here today, then do give the video a like. And for more giggles from the motorsport history books, get subscribed with the bell on so you never miss out on anything I do here. Massive thanks as ever to the good folk at Patreon, and if you want to help with the purchasing of images for these videos, or just in general help with keeping things running, then you can join the people on screen through the link in the description, along with finding links to Discord and to my socials. Well, there's super thanks down there too if you just want to top up my coffee cup or get me a sausage roll. So until next time, I've been Aidan Moore, have a cracking day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.